All right, so now we have our final watercolor digital painting. We want to look at it pretty closely. See that it has the variety we're hoping for of hard edges, soft edges. You want to look for things that bug you. See if you can understand where they come from. I'm looking at this hard edge right there. That bugs me. And there we go. And then take care of it. <laughs> I'm looking at that hard edge right there. That bugs me. Mystery layer searching. And you want to look at it up close like this so you get a sense of the details that are going to print. Hmm. Okay, so I know it's in group one. It must be in multiple layers in group one. Oh, there it is. Layer 13. All right, no problem. Such an easy fix. Okay. So you look around, and usually if there's an issue in one part of a layer, it's because something got overlooked in terms of a hard edge or, you know, is what I'm looking at, and you'll find it in other parts of that layer too. This is where a certain part of this sketch is being used. Right. You can try doing the auto select layer. Often that won't help you too much. Hmm, I didn't do what I wanted. Guess what I wanted was this. Yeah. Okay. All right. So once you're happy with it, you can even view it at 100% to see the actual pixels. And that those have some variety to them. And they do. Yeah. This should be an interesting print. All right. And once you're happy with it, save your progress. This file is 18 by 24 inches, so very large, at at least 300 at 318 so that's very healthy so we can output a lot of different versions and just for photo bucket i'm going to to output a jpeg to the desktop
And then I'm also, because there's so much white in it, the JPEG can even reduce something that's one and a half gigs down to only, you know, three, three megabytes or so. I can open up that JPEG in preview and I can actually use adjust color to see if there are any major changes I want to make. So when I do auto levels, it just really darkens some of my darks. But I don't necessarily like that because it makes the watercolor look too harsh. So that's a good sign. It didn't change temperatures and stuff dramatically. I can play with that and see I don't like it bluer. I don't like it more yellow. I don't like it greener. I don't like it more pink. Um, I can play with the saturation. Remember a portrait, especially one as colorful as this, it should still read really clearly even when all the values or all the colors are taken out. So desaturated, yes, it still looks pretty clear. Looks like an ink wash painting, which is, which is wonderful. So it means even at full saturation, it reads, even if you're colorblind, it reads. And it doesn't need more saturation than it has. Maybe it needs a tiny bit less, I don't know. All right. You can play with other settings, like what happens if you dim all the highlights, no, or dim all the shadows, rather, if you dim the highlights. It seems to have kind of a good balance, so that's great. Because remember, there's no real world equivalent we get to compare this to. It's our digital file and we, we live with it. So that's, that's our JPEG. Now, the reference file, I go to my folder and the main reference I used was this. So those are the two I upload. And it's a, a long walk, but there you go. And if I want to, I think I do, just to make the comparison a little bit easier, I'm going to crop it. So now looking back at this reference, I'm reminded of my sketch <laughs> where the eyes were nice and big. And so just to show you how, how kind of crazy and back and forth digital painting can be, what I can do is go to the very top layer, hold down option and say layer merge visible. That puts everything in one layer like a JPEG on top. Then what I can do is take that reference, let's open that up in Photoshop. Let's place it where the eyes line up. and see how those facial proportions compare. And they compare pretty well. It's just that my portrait has her eyes a little more squinted. So if I decide I need 
a little bit of that openness in the eyes. So I like the expression, mine has a little bit more. What I do is I go in, I select around the eyes, especially the bottom part, I duplicate it, I transform it, and I can warp it and stretch them down. Open them a little bit on both sides. This is so subtle, but because it's the eyes, it makes such a difference in the finished portrait. And then, it's like all the compositing we've done. Soft eraser, erase away. hard edges. And we're compositing from ourselves at this point. See that difference? Feels like the same person, but it's just her eyes are more open versus more squinted. It's almost what we would do in animation. And then you, you ask yourself, well, do I like it better this way? And does it reflect the reference more? And I think, yes, yes, it does. So sometimes just scrutinizing at the end can really help. And because it's all done on the duplicate layer, just those eyes, I don't need it. I don't need that merged layer anymore. So I got rid of that. So I still have all the ability to mess with it. So I have eyes open more. And actually, I like the tiny tinge of yellow that that photo reference gives. Especially around those outer edges. It's so subtle. <laughs> I want to make sure it doesn't muddy things up. But no, it's helpful. All right, so that's at 13%. So what do I do? I'm going to duplicate that, rasterize it so I can erase away from it. Put it at 100%. And erase some of these hard edges away. By having it on pin light, I don't have to worry about it. Oops. Ah. Being in areas I don't want it to be. Okay. Take it down. Which about there? 